You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. Hey guys, back with another Borderlands 2 video. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me to make some videos on the newly released community patch. However, I wanted to go ahead and go over an interesting byproduct of the community patch, and that's the introduction of some new modded guns and weapons for Borderlands 2. Now, there isn't really a whole lot of new weapons out right now, but I did want to talk about some of the ones that I tried out that I really like. Now, before we start, you will need the PC version of Borderlands 2, and you will need all of the DLC up to Destruct Peak. You will also need to modify your Borderlands 2 executable to run the community patch, as well as your own custom patches. And if you don't know what that is, be sure to check out Shadow Evil's guide on how to do that, and links to that will be in the description. From there, simply copy the code to your own custom text file from the GitHub links also in the description, and you should be good to go. Um, as a quick and final disclaimer, make sure you back up your saves as well as your original Borderlands 2 EXE file. If you plan to mod Borderlands 2, you do so at your own risk. But without further ado, let's go ahead and we'll jump into some guns. So our first gun is the Bull Shotgun, and it's a replacement for the Rock Salt Shotgun. Now, this mod was developed by GitHub user MegaCyber and uploaded by Double O Schmidt. Interestingly, it's a limescent weapon as it appears in my game, so I suspect that you will probably need some DLC in order to get this particular gun to work. That said, the Bull Shotgun is much better than the Rock Salt ever was. The Bull is really balanced in a way that you would expect, like your typical Hyperion Barreled Shotgun, uh, to be balanced. Basically, you're getting decent, if not even slightly weaker body shot damage, however, you're getting truly exceptional critical hit damage. And as you will see on Maya, the crit damage here is quite decent, and I could imagine this also being really nice on Zero with Boar. Now, you're also getting fairly nice ammo consumption too, uh, even with the vertical grip attachment, and this is actually better than the rock salt that it's based on, which normally consumes two ammo per shot. Now, I do have some complaints. Uh, for starters, it seems like in order to deal a decent amount of damage with this gun in higher level difficulties, you absolutely have to crit. Now, this may not be as much of a problem with somebody like Maya, but I found that using it on Axton prevents some problems, especially with some bully rod enemies. Now, while I could see how the name Bull and the red text do sort of go with the weapon skin, uh, it's a shame that the Bull uses the same weapon skin as the Rock Salt. To be fair though, I suspect this has a lot more to do with the overall limitations we have with running console scripts for modded weapons. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I guess when Gearbox made Borderlands 2, they reused a lot of textures, and in fact, you'll find that like a wall texture could sometimes appear on a gun. And that presents a problem, because if you specifically modify the texture that appears on that gun, it can mess up your wall texture. By the way, let me know if that's changed, because it would be really exciting if we can now truly modify existing weapon textures in this game. All in all though, I really like this gun, and I think it's worth it to replace your rock salt. Now, for those of you that have played Borderlands 1, the Bessie is probably one of, if not the strongest snipers in that game. However, a resourceful modder has attempted to port this particular weapon into Borderlands 2. Now, this is another weapon that was made by Mega Cyber, and I think it's really cool that he was able to match the rarity of the original gun. Now, the old Bessie replaces the Hawkeye, and as you can tell from the way the weapon looks, it definitely shows. It does appear to have much higher critical hit damage bonus than the Hawkeye though. And to give you guys some idea, I believe a Skookum Hawkeye with similar parts has about 580% critical hit damage bonus, where the Skookum Old Bessie has about 705% critical hit damage bonus. And also, just like the Bessie from Borderlands 1, you're getting improved zoom over the Hawkeye as well. I've always considered the Bessie to be Borderlands 1's truly accurate sniper, because if you aim down the sight, the projectile would always go exactly where your crosshairs pointed without fail. Uh, this version retains much of that accuracy, however it lacks some of the same wow factor. That said, I think a lot of that has more to do with the weapon this mod is based on rather than the mod itself. The Hawkeye's problem is that it is capable of high crit damage, however its base damage is simply pitiful. This is because it has a 50% base damage reduction as you can see on the item card. 
the original Bessie could utterly massacre enemies with its high damage and all it like amazing accuracy. Like you could point this at an uh, enemy's crit spot in Borderlands 1, you could fire and it was almost a guaranteed kill every time. Even still, it's nice to see Borderlands 1 weapons return in Borderlands 2. Now this next gun is one of the better weapons that I've seen so far, and this was made by Aaron Quadruple Zero, and this ultimately replaces the landscaper shotgun with another Borderlands 1 weapon known as the hammer. Uh, what I'm most impressed with is the weapon texture on display here. Granted, the hammer is now a torque shotgun, however you're getting what appears to be a new texture complete with a perfectly placed Vladov V on both sides of the gun located just above the magazine slot. Uh, Aaron Quadruple Zero did an amazing job giving us an idea of how the hammer might have actually looked provided it had made it into Borderlands 2. I really like this gun. Uh, while the magazine size is fairly ridiculous, the sheer fire rate and damage make this a pretty fun weapon to use on Axton. I suspect Krieg and Salvador players may really enjoy this weapon as well. Based on some limiting testing that I've done, uh, it appears to get grenade damage bonus too. So if you're playing Axton, you may find that this could be a really good weapon to pair with that new legendary Grenadier class mod. I do have one minor gripe with this weapon though. Uh, maybe this only happens to me and your experience may be different, but I've found that I occasionally have instances where the textures don't load properly while I have the weapon equipped in hand. Now, there could be some sort of limitation with Borderlands 2 going on here, but I have noticed the barrel of the gun gets discolored. Uh, I've also noticed that in some environments, the yellow colored capacitors can turn completely white. But with that said, it's really just a minor thing and won't affect how the gun itself performs. This is a really cool gun and I think it's something you should really implement into your own custom patches. All right, so we've got one more Borderlands 1 port to Borderlands 2, and that's the Nemesis. Like the Hammer, this mod was done by Aaron Quadruple Zero, and it's actually a replacement for the Dominator. Now, this is pretty crazy to think about, considering that the Dominator is an entirely different type of pistol compared to the Nemesis from Borderlands 1. Now, for those of you that remember, the Nemesis was a dual element shock and corrosive pistol, and in my personal opinion, it was probably one of the best weapons in Borderlands 1. Now the Nemesis also had the potential to be a hybrid weapon and could mix itself with the Invader pistol, which was another Hyperion pistol that could empty its entire magazine while aiming down sights. Aaron Quadruple Zero ultimately opted to make his version of the Nemesis a doll weapon that burst fires its entire magazine, just like the Nemesis Invader used to. This ultimately leads to both some interesting as well as some frustrating results. Aside from the fact that the Nemesis doesn't appear to get grenade damage bonus, the Nemesis deals the bulk of its damage through shock damage as opposed to corrosive damage. So at first glance, you might think this is going to be a really powerful gun against loaders, only to discover that the majority of your damage dealt is shock. The advantage of the Nemesis from Borderlands 1 is that it benefited from the damage boost that weapons dealt to corroded enemies, or enemies that had a corrosive damage over time effect. In Borderlands 2, Slag ultimately replaces this ability, so what you've got is a weapon that may be able to apply to status effects, but may not perform as well as your Hornet might against loaders. Even still, I do like the introduction of the Nemesis into Borderlands 2. And ultimately, I think we can all agree that it looks way better than the Dominator ever did. And finally, we have another weapon that replaces the Hellfire, and that's the Thunderfire. As you can probably tell from both the red text and the name, this SMG is basically a tribute to the Thunderfire from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, this was another weapon that was created by Aaron Quadruple Zero, however, this is the second version that Sir on my edited to make it so that the fins move, the damage over time effects apply correctly, and to increase the splash radius. This SMG is actually pretty awesome. Unlike the Florentine, which deals primarily slag and shock damage, the Thunderfire deals fire and shock, and is perfect up against flesh vulnerable enemies. 
when combined with a legendary Cat SMG on Maya, this gun absolutely wrecks bandits in this game. From what I can tell, this gun has significant splash radius, and there may be some kind of rocket launcher that was used to create this. Uh, this means you can fire around enemies with the thunder fire and still deal damage. However, the issue is that if you fire up close, you're going to get a lot of weird shaking, which may make being more accurate a lot more difficult. I also like the weapon skin on offer here. It sort of looks like the pyrophobia in a way, however the skin seems to translate much better to the SMG body than it would if you simply put the pyrophobia skin directly on an SMG. My only real complaint is ammo consumption. Now, I know the original consumed 2 ammo per shot, however it would be nice if there was a version that didn't require 2 ammo per shot. Overall, while I wish the fire explosion or the Nova effect was here, it's still pretty cool that it is possible to create a thunder fire in Borderlands 2. I remember back in the day I wished that more dual elemental weapons existed. Granted, there were hybrids, and you can make weapons with removed elements to get interesting effects, but there wasn't really ever a truly fire and shock elemental weapon in this entire game. And this is ultimately going to be a great gun mod to download, and I found that I really like it on Maya. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and let's see if we can get 1500 likes. If we don't, well... That'd just be a boatload of ass. Seriously though, guys, like this video if you liked it. Click the bell to join the notification squad. And as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.